Welcome back to Bazaar Morning Call. Now, HDFC Bank, as promised, is on our radar after the company raised a whopping $1 billion through 81 bonds. And the coupon rate has been fixed at 3.7%. Ashish Parthasati, the treasurer at HDFC Bank, joins us now. And Lata is right here with me in the studio to take the discussion forward. Lata, all yours. Thank you very much, Sonia. I couldn't miss an opportunity to speak to Ashish uh, uh, after such a long time. And it is a very important uh, issue that uh, HDFC Bank has raised money. Uh, good morning, Ashish. Thanks much. Well, this 3.7%, uh, uh, is this the all-in cost? Uh, will you hedge it? And if you hedge it, what's the cost? Good morning, Lata, and uh, thank you for calling me here. <laughs> yep, then uh, 3.7 is the coupon. Mm. Uh, uh, there would be some additional costs like you know, lawyer fees and bank of fees, etc., et but that's not much. That's the all-in dollar cost. Uh, you know, just to note that it is one of the tightest price 81 from the region, right? With, uh, you know, with the rating which we get because of where we are uh, rated uh, on, a, on the sovereign, I think it is one of the tightest we have seen in the region through the year. Uh, it's an extremely well-priced bond. Uh, yes, it's been raised for India from India. So it will be hedged somewhere, somewhere you know, in the domestic market. It, obviously, the exchange rate has to be hedged. Okay. No, this is a dollar raising, right? So you have to uh, hedge it. No, so if the dollar was raised from an overseas branch uh, where, you know, where the balance sheet is in dollars, then one wouldn't have to raise, uh, hedge it. But since we have raised it from India uh, and it will be on the rupee book, so mm. we will need to hedge it. Okay. In that case, does the cost become uh, slightly uncompetitive? So it depends on the, the perspective you take, right? Uh, cost uncompetitive to what? Mm. Uh, we can only compare it to, to, a, rupee, you know, to a rupee uh, raising, is what I meant. Exactly, to a rupee To an raising. FD so or whatever you offer to your uh, uh, fixed deposit uh, deposit. It would be possibly slightly higher, maybe not significantly higher, but slightly higher than what we may have been able to raise in rupees. We have not raised for quite some time. Okay. Uh, however, uh, you know, we know that... Uh, uh, one, two, two issues, right? One, the liquidity in the domestic market uh, is limited uh, for various reasons, uh, you know, everyone is well aware of. And obviously, it just expands, uh, you know, completely new investor uh, base for us. Uh, we have not gone to the dollar market since 2013. That was the last public issue of our dollar bonds. Hmm. And there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, appetite uh, we could see from overseas investors for this fund. So it's been good. You know, at one go, if you can raise $1 billion, uh, uh, it's extremely good. I don't think, you know, in one issue now, it's possible to raise equivalent of $1 billion from the domestic market. Okay. And therefore, what does this take your cost of funds to? Does it remain more or less the same? See, the cost of funds is just a small portion of our uh, balance sheet, right? Uh, you know, one billion is roughly, say, 7,500 crores. In our total balance sheet, how much Doesn't show. can it make to, uh, you know, cost of funds? So we don't look at it as a cost of funds. It's cost of capital, right? This is okay. your one capital, you know. Uh, uh, you know, this is what I'm saying is taking place of equity capital, if so, at all. So, okay. you know, uh, so what does it take your capital adequacy to? I have not done the computation. Okay. See, total All capital right. adequacy was 19.1 right as of June. It will it, it increase it by a bit. Uh, okay. Uh, so no, then you don't I'll really you... need capital if it is that uh, high. So will you go for more such issuances because the market is kind? Uh, so, uh, two, two things. Now, uh, it's a question of this part of capital planning, right? We yes. have uh, uh, something and... Uh, Given the, uh, the possibilities of reasonable growth in the future, we need to fortify our capital. So you have to balance between when the market is ready and when we need capital. Uh, oh, okay. so, and, uh, so you have to balance both. We cannot go, at, as per current regulations, our understanding is that we may not be able to go to the you know overseas market further. Uh, okay. Given regulatory constraints, you know, as we understand the regulation, okay. but let's see what comes of it. I think you know the, there is some clarity, which uh, banks are. I understand have approached the uh, central bank to you know figure out what is the exact amount that can be raised overseas in an 81 issue. Oh, I see. There are limits to it, is it? Uh, you know, so it's like the it, it, uh, the guideline says that you can raise up to 49 percent in the overseas market of the eligible
eligible 81. Okay. Now that eligible 81 is a you know a, a open to question. Uh, okay. The uh, you know so that's something which needs clarity. Okay. Okay. But uh, I mean you're growing at 14.4 percent your loan book. Uh, do you really need capital? I mean, you said you're nineteen percent in terms of uh, uh, capital adequacy. We are nineteen percent. So again, the various aspects. We have we have grown at fourteen point four percent in the past year, right? And the uh, past year may not have been the best year uh, for uh, the Indian economy. There is a lot of uh, next year. As per RPI, we are you know projected to grow at nine and a half percent real rate of growth, mm. which will you know I would. Presume translate to some 14, 15 percent uh, nominal GDP, right? And uh, the year uh, subsequent to that, again, you know, uh, as you go further, the you know range of uh, projections are large, but the uh, are very wide. But point is that there is a runway for growth. And the second aspect is, uh, you know, uh, one of course we thought there was a gap in the 81 eligible 81 okay. which we could fill our you know Fair. capital structure with because we want uh, we were just at 0.7 of uh, 81 uh, were the okay. domestic issue secondly at some point in time that domestic issue the call option is coming sometime you know next year okay so you know we have to plan so it's as i said it's part of capital planning oh, yeah. uh, and obviously married with the fact the when is the market, you know, looking good? Okay. So, you know, you can't have both. If you're lucky, as yes, you would have get both the things simultaneously in the good market plus need at that point in time. But, you know. Fair enough. Fair enough. It that. is it, also tactical. Yeah. I agree with you. Now, before I get rotten tomatoes thrown at me, let me ask you the question which all investors want to ask. Any f f feelers from RBI as to when the entire ban will be taken off? So uh, I I don't think you know uh, we I can I can know more than what we have already said before. Okay. Uh, we have been working uh, since that time. We have been always working on you know improving our uh, uh, technology in that sense. Not that yes. stuff, you know we, it is it is a continuous process for all banks, right? You know they, you have to increase the scale in terms of the number of customers you can uh, use. You can. You have to increase resiliency in terms of you know, trying to ensure always on systems, right? And the third thing is obviously you have to improve the customer experience at the front end. So we have been working, we have done a lot of work over a period of time. And, you know, where we have been in continuous uh, uh, touch with the regulator in terms of updating them of mm. what all we have done. No. And, you know, uh, Ashish, uh, no, is there anything that, specific we, uh, that kept, you know, the regulator lifted the ban partially on credit cards. Is there any one milestone they wanted you to perform before the full thing that's is released? not something no. I am aware of. Okay. I think, you know, there's a, a multiple things. So, you know, as I said, we keep on continuing. Continuously updating them, they have removed one embargo, so you know we are very grateful for that. And then we just wait. Uh, okay. uh, so that's okay. What about this tie-up with Paytm? Does it allow you to be give you a little more flexibility? No. See, this the other you know uh, concept. I thought I would put it forward. See, there is a lot of uh, you know talk about fintech and fintech uh, competition to banks, etc. Right. Uh, so there are various. How do you uh, uh, work in that environment? That right? you can always consider everything as competition and try and fight it out. But you know there are advantages each uh, uh, part of the business. When we are a bank. There are there's a banking system that will exist. It has its own strengths and its own competencies. And there are fintechs who have their own strengths and competencies. So how do we you know? Uh, uh, Progress in that environment. There are two ways. There are at least multiple ways. Two of those ways is have used the fintechs as partners to develop your own, you know, customer interface, etc., which they are extremely good at. And the second is there is a large fintech occupying some space where where banks don't occupy. Work with them as partners. So you see these partnerships at on different levels. Whether you know what we have announced as Paytm, you could see partnerships. In the future, also for other things, so okay. where uh, there is a space for the large fintech and there is a space for the bank, ah. and you know, if both come together, 
it is uh, one mutually okay. beneficial for both the partners as well as the customer. Okay. Well, I think this is the, the more important question where you have maximum expertise. Uh, what have you made of the minutes? Uh, are you getting a sense that short-term yields will rise? See, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, I think globally, central banks are, uh, you know, uh, looking at this with a with some lens. Till now, the lens has been growth, growth. Until uh, we see sustainable growth, we will not do anything. I think that is what is likely to prevail. Yes, inflation is there, you know, we, we can't run away from it. But if you, you know, uh, uh, look at India, the way I see it and, and it's been expressed by a lot of people, a lot mm. of, you know, uh, in the government now and the earlier one, two things. Firstly, as a uh, growing economy, we our focus has to be growth. There mm. can't be anything else, right? You know, uh, only if we have growth, we can talk about distribution, you know, fair distribution, equal distribution, etc., etc., uh, you know, uh, as we go on. And the pandemic, what it has done is it severely impacted our growth trajectory. Just, you know, one shot brought it down, right? Now, even if we grow at the current forecasted rate, we, we, we won't catch up with the earlier growth uh, trends, even at a, you know, significantly moderate growth rate. For a long time, for some you know, no, no, few I years, guess, I think. Yeah, so, yes. I think that point is taken. I'm just asking that after these minutes, what is your expectation? Uh, have you advanced the expectation of a reverse repo hike in the current year itself? Mm -hmm. Therefore, how will, I mean, mine is a very state-of-the-art question. What are you expecting short-term bond yields to do? No, no, sure, sure. so I, I don't think it has advanced uh, significantly unless we see more data. I don't think inflation is uh, uh, the only, you know, uh, uh, factor. We need to see, I think the only reason or factor which will determine whether short-term rates will get raised is sustainable growth. You know, if you see quarter on quarter of sustainable growth plus forecasted sustainable okay. growth, that's the time when we think, you know, uh, the... the so not in, in, not the in calendar rate. 21? No reverse. It is, I don't expect, okay. if you ask my personal expectations, no. All right. Okay, we'll leave it at that. There was a bit of a jitter whether uh, people will start advancing their expectations. Thank you very much, Ashish Patsarthi, for joining me. Thank you, Latan. Thank you very much.